Welcome back to Falcon Figures, where today I'm going to be doing another WWF Hasbro figure unboxing video. And this one is going to be adding to my Series 7 Mint Loose Collection, but it's also going to be telling a Restore Your Faith in Humanity story. Don't forget the thumbs up. Oh, friend! Oh, new friend! Friend! Oh, friend! friend. He's my friend! Oh, hey, friend! Oh, friend! Fuck you lot, where's the beer? So I usually I like to have a minimum of two figures to unbox for a video. Um, and there are two figures that I need for Series 7. Um, I need Razor, I need Razor Ramon, uh, and I also need Kamala. And um, I usually would have waited until I got both of them to do the, the next Series 7 video. But as I said in the intro, really, really cool thing happened recently um, via Facebook. On Facebook, um, one, of the, one of the other people that are in a lot of the Hasbro collector groups got in touch with me. And he said, "Do you are you still looking for a Kamala to unbox for your videos?" And uh, I said, "Well, yeah, I'm." And I fully expected a uh, a follow up to be, "Well, I've got this one. I'll sell you it to for you know a hundred pound more, and it's worth kind of thing." Because I get a lot of that. I get people getting in touch with me all the time and saying, "Oh, if you want such and such a figure to unbox, I'll sell you this one for insert price. It's well over market value here," um, because they think, "Well, they've got." something that's in bad shape, like it's not like mint condition, not gradable condition. So I'm a guy that's looking for cracked bubbles and beat up cars and stuff. So there's a good chance to get rid of figures you want to keep and get a good price for them. And it gets annoying after a while. It does when you get people get in touch with you saying, do you want to buy this? Uh, I'm, I'm only looking for this outrageous amount. Um, so that's, that's exactly what I thought was happening. I thought he was getting in touch to say, I've got Kamala. If you want it, I'll sell you it for X amount. Um, so I was kind of tentative. I said to him, "Yeah, I need Kamala. I need a Kamala to open up for Mint Loose." Um, but you know, I'm I'm not looking to spend big money just now. So he said, "No, no, I just want to give it to you." And I was like, "Are you joking? Like what? What?" Uh, so yeah, he sent me this, sent me this figure for absolutely nothing. Got it for free. The reason he told me he was giving it away is because it actually has some mildew or mold or something behind the bubble. It's not a bad card. It's not a bad card at all. It's got a little bit of a crease at the top. It's not a perfect card by any means. Uh, but the big issue with it is it has that, I don't know if you can see that, kind of mould behind the mildew, behind the bubble, which isn't really uncommon uh, in the Hasbro figures. But um, but yeah, so he said he had another one as well, which was like an upgrade on this. And he said he didn't need this, didn't want this. And suppose he was probably thinking if he sells this or swaps it, somebody's probably going to get a hold of it and then go, oh, wait a minute, that's worse than I thought. Yeah, you know, I want to renege on the deal kind of thing. I suppose that was in the back of his head as well. So he said, look, I just want rid of it. I just, I just want to pass it on. He says, since since I know you're looking for one to unbox on YouTube, he says, you can have it. So I literally got this for nothing. I mean, he, I offered to pay postage and he didn't uh, even take me up on that. He said, no, I bought him some spots on the Facebook raffle just to, to, to give him something. But um, he didn't even take postage because he said, I'll just send it to you. Just let me know your address and I'll send it to you. So um, the, the collector that sent this to me is, he's known on Facebook as Harley Hector. Now, I don't believe that's his real name. <laughs> I don't, it might be, I don't know. But uh, I think his name is actually Ross because on eBay, his username on eBay, because he has like sold things on eBay and he's linked to them through Facebook and stuff. So um, his eBay username is Ross Go something. So I'm thinking his name's Ross. Possibly either that or he's using someone else's eBay account. Um, but yeah, he's known on Facebook as Harley Hector, fairly active in the Hasbro Collector community, fairly active in the, the wrestling figure forums and stuff. So a sort of well known guy in the and certainly on Facebook, if nothing else. Um and yeah, he he gave me this for absolutely nothing. I'm still sort of struggling to to fathom that I've managed to get one to add to the collection at the cost of zero pounds. So yeah, uh, no reason to hang about. Let's just crack them open and have a look. I suppose it's kind of probably reassuring. Yeah, look at that, like dusty mildew on the card. It's probably, it's probably reassuring for Harley that he's giving this away to somebody that needs it and they're not just going to try and bump them and like sell it on for a profit or something like that. They are actually going, oh, that was really stiff. Kamala was like almost stuck together there but uh 
yeah, if no one that's you're giving it to someone that, that opens the figures up and, and tries to build a mentless collection must be reassuring that you're not going to get totally mugged off by saying free to a good home and then the next day it's on eBay for 100 quid or something like that, which happens a lot on these Facebook groups. It's happened to me before. I've offered good deals to collectors because I had figures that I don't want or uh, or had doubles of or, or you know, didn't have any use for anymore. Offered a really good price and said that I just, just want to move it on, just want to give it to someone else to enjoy. And then the next day or two days later, it's for sale for twice what I sold it for. It happens a lot and it sucks. Uh, so yeah, it must be reassuring for Harley to know that well, I mean, he's, he's got first-hand evidence. It's on YouTube. I'm opening up Kamala. I'm not going to try and uh, flip him. I'm not going to try and put him for a profit. Um, but, yeah, what a gesture. What a gesture just to give somebody a figure for nothing. Because um, even in banged-up shape, even in poor condition, you know, it's, it's, there are not amounts of money to be sniffed at that these figures uh, change hands for. Um, but that said, now that he's out of the packet, I'm not really sure... If, I mean, obviously, it's hard to say that someone with darker skin tone uh, like has sun fading. It's more evident in the really light skin tones uh, when they're sun fading. But I'm just not sure that when I'm looking at that, if his head and his legs are a slightly lighter shade of brown than his body. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it's just the lighting above the table, because I'm filming this quite late at night. It's like nearly midnight, and uh, I've got the big light on, so... It might just be the way the, the light's hitting the figure. But, yeah, it looks like his legs are slight. And his head, a wee bit as well. It might just be because his head and his legs aren't m as much of a vinyl finish. They aren't as much of a sort of a shiny finish. Uh, they're more a sort of matte finish. Uh, his head and his legs, his body's quite shiny. But maybe that's what it is. The light's just sort of bouncing off it. But, um, anyway. So, yeah, this is Kamala. Uh, obviously, I need this figure... But he is a jumper. Now, yeah, let's not for the millionth time talk about all the issues with jumpers. But Kamala, I mean, I, I don't know why he would have been given a jump move. He was a big guy. You know, he was he was a big monster heel. I mean, he, he would have been more suited to, like, the Earthquake, Bam Bam Bigelow type mould. I mean, even I've seen customs of Kamala made using Yokozuna bodies, which doesn't look out of place. It looks, you know, fairly accurate. Um, to what he would have looked like, but this is a it's a strange move to give to him. I mean, I suppose one answer, one reason for it might be that most of the other moves in the line were already being used. So you know, Razor and uh, Owen have got the clothesliner. There's the Sean's got the Macho Man. Nails has got the Smash. Ted DiBiase, and then Crush has got the the Flipper, the Suplexer move. So really, after that, you're only really left with like the Hulk Hogan Gorilla Press Slam move, um, or the jump move, and he and obviously all the or the clothesliner, I suppose. But the clotheslines were all kind of slim. The uh, the press slammers were all like muscle guys, body guys, and he was neither of those builds. He was he was definitely neither of those builds. Although they could have made because if you look at the the body they've used for the jumper, it's a bigger body than the jumpers usually have. So they could have made a heavier set, Gorilla Press Slammer or um, Clothesline, sorry, Puncher. But yeah, obviously they've gone for the jump move. <sighs> Never a great decision anyway, but for someone who just, I'm trying to remember, did Kamala ever, I mean, he was fairly agile, but did he ever come off the top rope or anything? I don't think he did. I don't, certainly not regularly. Um, so th that's disappointing. But other than that though, other than the fact that he's got the worst move out of the lot, he has a pretty cool, I mean, the detail is pretty cool. You know, he's got this sort of loincloth, loincloth even, um, moulded on. And it's a completely different texture, completely different look. The detail there, because it's got all the little sort of slices and cuts, like it is just a, a piece of material or a piece of, piece of leather that he's just skinned off an animal and then wrapped on his waist. Uh, it does look like that's a fairly decent amount of detail put into that. That's pretty good. Uh, he's obviously got the the necklace that's moulded on. That's I suppose that's a little bit annoying. That that could have been an accessory, could have come off. Um, but face paint's fairly good. I mean that, you know, right up onto his head and stuff. That's that's a fair portrayal of what it looked like facially. Really accurate to what the the wrestler actually looked like. So good portrayal of him. Obviously, the famous story with Kamala is 
the moon belly, star belly variant. Um, Kamala wrestled with a moon on his belly and not a star. It was two white stars on his chest and a, a yellow moon in his belly. And there was a small number of those figures released with the moon on the belly. And there's sort of there's conflicting stories as to why it was changed. The one I hear most regularly is that the the wrestler himself wouldn't sign off on his image rights or something like that. Uh, and because of that, they thought, well, we'll make a small change so it's not a complete representation of the of the, the character and then release it like that. I mean, uh, that's the story I hear most regularly, but <clears throat> I don't know how how convincing that argument is because it's he's been released as Kamala and everything else is a likeness of Kamala. So I don't understand why a moon on the belly versus a star on the belly would have made any sort of difference in a, a courtroom uh, about the rights of the character, I think. I'm not too sure how that holds up, but that is the, the, the reason I hear most often about why Moonbelly was pulled. Uh, obviously, there are a few Moonbellies out there. Um, as far as I'm aware, it was just a, kind of, a, a sample that was sent. There was a sample run made, uh, and again, conflicting stories about how many were ever in that sample run, um, but I think the fact that it was a sample run, it would have probably just been double figures. Like It wouldn't have been over 100 it would just been double figures um sent to sort of retail managers and retail executives to okay the figure to order order more say yeah we'll have a few more of these but then when the actual orders came in they came out with the star in the belly um so that obviously makes the moon belly kamala kamala even very very rare um but it's one of those things that I've got kind of mixed feelings about it. As, as a Hasbro collector, obviously it'd be awesome to have a Moonbelly Kamala. And the ones that, that you see for sale and trade in hands, I mean, there probably are only two or three that have ever traded hands. And just whenever they come up, you're like, oh, there's another Moonbelly. But it's really the same one moving on again. Um, but I've seen a couple graded um, and they go for 15, 20,000 pounds. It's, it's a lot, a lot of money. So from that point of view, you'd obviously like to have one because it is one of the holy grails of the, the Hasbro line, but I mean, it's Kamala. I mean, Kamala was never one of my favorite wrestlers. He was never somebody I got really excited about. And this figure in itself is not a figure that you think, I oh, can't wait to get a Kamala, you know? So it's, that kind of taints it for me. If it was, you know, like a Bret Hart or a Shawn Michaels or a Macho Man or a Warrior or a Hogan even, uh, with a, a slight variant, then yeah, that would be a reason to chase it. That would be a reason to break the bank for it. But it's Kamala. It's not anybody really special. The only sort of selling point is that, that its place in the um, the history and the lure of uh, of the Hasbro figure line, you know, the sort of the, the fabled history of Hasbro figures. Um, so that's the only reason you'd want it. You wouldn't want it for nostalgic purposes because Kamala doesn't really hold any nostalgic value for me. Um, so, yeah, it's certainly not something I'm ever expecting to own, a Moonbelly Kamala. You see people that make customs and fair play to them if you know just to sort of get as close to being a completist if they can. They need a Moonbelly Kamala. Can't afford to pay 20 grand for one, so they get it custom, but... It's not, again, I wouldn't want it customed. I'm not huge on customs anyway. I prefer customs that um, are wrestlers from this era that never got a Hasbro figure. Those are the kind of customs I like. Um, I don't like just random customs for the sake of it. And I certainly don't like custom attempts at high value figures that already exist, like Moonbelly Kamala. You know, you see it a lot with the Series 11 guys, the, the green cards. You see a lot of custom versions of them being touted for sale. Um, some of them go for big money as well, even though they're um, advertised as customs, uh, they go for big money. Um, and I just don't like that. I don't like that um, people are customising figures that already exist. I just think that's it's, it's deceptive. And uh, I don't think any good will come of it. But yeah, anyway, so um, to go back to um, why it's just Kamala and not Razor, as I say, ordinarily, I was looking for Kamala and Razor, so... I would have, if had I got a Kamala by another means, I would have waited to have, have Razor, to open up Razor and do the video with both of them. But just because I got them from nothing, Harley just, just reached out to me. I mean, I didn't get in touch with Harley. He came to me and said, do you need this figure? Uh, I thought it's just a great story to tell and uh, and share with everybody and just kind of reassure everybody that there are some good guys out there because, as I say, I, get, I have to deal with a lot of garbage in the collector community 
I've I've had to deal with people that try to rip me off. I've had to deal with people that um that have ripped me off, frankly, you know, and people that seem like they're trying to be good guys, seem like they're trying to help you out, but then when you actually get what they're selling you or or what have you, you think, oh, they've actually done me there. And there's a lot of that in the collective community. Um, so to, to, for somebody to reach out and say, I want to give this to you for nothing because uh, I know that you like to open them up on YouTube, I think that's awesome, awesome gesture. And uh, it really does sort of fill the tank up a little bit more um, in terms of trusting people and, and having a bit more faith in people within the, the WWF Hasbro collector world. Um, so yes, and also it's something I'm going to try. I'm going to try and pay forward as well. Next time I get a doubler or something, I think what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll give it away and say just look free to take it home. But on the premise, on the, the sort of caveat that you have to pay it forward as well. You know, you have to give someone else a help out at some point. Um, so hopefully it can be the start of a, a chain of good deeds within the, the WWF Hasbro Collector world. So that's that for this video. Again, massive thanks to Harley Hector or Ross, Roscoe, whatever your real name is, mate, um, for for letting me have this Kamal for nothing. Can't can't thank him enough. Hugely appreciated. Awesome gesture. Um, Series 7, getting close to completion. As I say, just need Razor. <sighs> Razor's going to be tough to get. I mean, it's getting to the stage now with my Hasbro's that it's just the really harder to find ones that and the they're all going to be of a certain a certain value. So it's getting to the stage now where it's hard to get them for good prices. Like even the ones that are really banged up, uh, people still want good money for them because it is the more rare, harder to find ones that I'm looking for. And Razor kind of falls into that category. His value's gone up, gone up a lot recently. So even on banged up cards and crack bubbles and stuff, people still want top dollar for Razor. But I'll persist, you know, and there's been a couple of bargains throughout the, the time I've been doing this. I've picked up a couple of bargains, none more so than Kamala himself, but you know, I have picked up uh, very, very cheap figures, like the figures way below really what they should have been sold for. Um, so I'm not going to give up. I'll keep an eye out. I'll persist and hopefully Razor will make his way to me at one point and I'll add him to the collection. But um, yeah, if you enjoyed that, um, like, share, subscribe, give uh, Harley Hector some virtual love on Facebook for the gesture he gave me. Stay safe and we'll speak soon.